In this video, we're going to look at how a loft conversion can be done in a traditional property so that we can prepare it for storage use. So we can see here that on the ground, we've got the flitch beam, which we're going to use in our conversion. And it could be any beam. It could be a steel I-beam RSJ, or if the span is short enough, it could be a timber beam. The flitch beam consists of two timbers with a steel flat sandwiched in between. So if we remove that timber here, we can see the one timber on one side and the steel flat in the middle. Now that's bolted through at intervals along the whole length, which I haven't shown here. So if we go into the property now, we'll climb up to the first floor. So switching to the sketch model, we can see a bit more clearly what's going on here. So we'll take this binder out and the, the thing we have to be careful with, with removing binders and then connecting the existing ceiling to the new beam is that we might get some cracking within the ceiling if the deflections are too high, either while we're working on this or once you start applying load to this beam, when you start using your loft for storage. And one of the things that you design that beam for is for limiting the deflection. Once that storage load has been applied within certain parameters so that it doesn't crack the, the ceiling finishes. And that's something that your structural engineer will look into. So with that ceiling binder removed and with the flitch beam in place, we can now put some new floor timbers in. And within this roof structure, we can see that this flitch beam spans between the gable wall here and the load bearing internal wall here. And in a smaller property, it would span from gable to gable. So we'll take a section through the property to show you what's going on here. So we've taken off the roof covering one side just to show you the rafters here. And this, as we saw in the previous video, is the purlin. We've taken away any ceiling binders that's in there. And now what we can do is span new floor joists in between these two beams. And we're not going to use this intermediate wall for support because often in this kind of property, this wall often isn't there. And also, if we need to take it away in the in future, we want to make it a bit more open plan at first floor. Then if we use this wall for support now for the storage conversion, then we'd need to put additional structure in later. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to put joists in and span them across from that beam right across to the other beam. And now you can see why we had to remove those ceiling binders because they're actually in the way. So we'll remove those again and let's make this a sensible timber size. At the moment it's 41 millimeters, so let's make it 47. 160, so let's make it 175. And if we go down into the floor zone here, we can see that we've got all this extra space where the existing ceiling is already. So what we can do is we can move this further down. So we can see that it's dropped down below the beam and we could take it all the way down to the ceiling, which is there. That would now be flush with the plasterboard below. We're not going to take it quite that low down just to allow for it to deflect and not impact the ceiling. So we're going to just move it back up by, let's say, 20 millimeters. And now what we can do is we can space that with the same spacing that the original ceiling joists have. We'll move the first one over here, then we'll space them out 450. See what that does. OK, so what we now have here is a new floor. And what we would do at this stage is to use plywood or OSB sheeting chipboard, put that over the top to create the floor. So this floor is no longer resting on that wall. And if we were wanting to support, if we we're wanting to remove that wall, all we would now need to do is create noggins in between. So let's just show you here over the top of the wall. 
from joist to joist and then putting joist hangers or some kind of strapping down under these existing ceiling joists in order to support them. So let's copy that across one. And we've got another ceiling binder here, which is supporting the ceiling joists over the hallway area. So we would be able to get rid of that as well and continue our loft in that direction. So these are supported by joist hangers. So they would look something like this. You would have the strap here, make it a bit wider, which would go to the joist hanger here. It would look something like that and we could face fix onto this flitch beam. That's, that's the beauty of a flitch beam is that it's got this timber face to fix to and we can also wrap this joist hanger if it's something like a speedy joist hanger over the top and nail it down over the top as well. It would wrap over and depending on the length of the strap we could then nail it here and here. So that detail mirrors on, on this side as well. I'll complete that part of the model in a minute, but that's basically how to create a storage space in your loft. It comprises of structural beam from gable to gable or from gable to internal load bearing wall and spanning new floor joists between them, but they can be dropped down further between the existing roof joists can see here, ceiling joist, sorry, in order to give you the maximum headroom. So in this particular property, we've now got headroom. Let's just take a measurement down from the ridge, top of that board. So 2.4 meters, that's a good amount of headroom. So if we can, let's just say we need around two meters headroom, that's around about there. If you can see the, the faint line going across so we'd have a good amount of, of usable space where we can stand up in. So we can get an idea now of the space that we've created here and what we'll do is we'll continue putting the boards in and nailing them down to the rafters to create the diaphragm that we need in order to stop those glitch beams from buckling and if you want to watch our videos on how to design a flitch beam and they're going to be in the description below. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to remove this purlin, which is supporting the roof, see on this side without the roof covering over it. And that purlin is restricting the space that we've got if we were to change this to habitable. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those out and we're going to support the rafters on our new beam. And that's going to be in the next video. So if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments below.